Hello everybody, it is Ashley Fields with Yard R Us. Today is Monday, February 22nd, and we are going to be working on our Easter egg wheelbarrow. Um, I did post a uh, sample photo of this a couple of weeks ago, um, but I actually took that sample to the store, so I don't have it with us tonight. Uh, but we're gonna get this one done, and then you guys can see what it's going to look like. Let me get myself pulled up over here. Go. Okay, I think I've got everything ready. Y'all, on my uh, sample version of this, uh, the wheelbarrow, I did not do any dry brushing in the background. Um, and then uh, somebody had asked if I was planning on doing dry brushing in the background. And I said, well, no, but I, I can go ahead and try it out. So I'm gonna throw a little dry brushing down and then uh, we'll go ahead and do our shading and outlining and everything. Uh, my husband just opened that door and it is getting cold out here, y'all. I might have to get up and close that. I don't know if uh, anybody at home ever feels like they're always going behind everybody to close all the doors and turn the lights off and stuff like that because I feel like that's life. It's mom life. All right, y'all, I'm just getting my colors ready. I got a little bit of that uh, shading brown and a little bit of camel. Really, I got a little too much. I didn't need that much. Uh, let me get... A dry brush now I'm gonna go ahead and dip my brush uh, this is like a two inch chip brush I'm gonna just dip it in some water and get it a little bit wet because I like my paint to be watered down a little bit now basically I'm loading that on and then I'm offloading it right back off I really don't want very much on here hey Debbie how are you babe uh, I was just saying I'm gonna I'm just gonna do a little bit of dry brushing in the background I did not do that on my sample uh, But I really just kind of want to see what it's gonna look like um, I want to say it was I think Deborah had asked me uh, On a live maybe last week if I was gonna do dry brushing. I thought oh, let me just try it out Hey, Victoria. How are you? Hey, mom? How is, uh, Victoria, how's it all going over there? And Debbie, I know y'all both have had, um, issues with, um, pipe leaks and things like that. So, I'm feeling for you girls. Hope y'all are hanging in there as best you can. Y'all, I don't know what it is, um, about today, but I have just been exhausted. I really don't know why I yesterday we had a lot we were running around and taking care of all sorts of stuff and filing paperwork that I've literally neglected for probably I don't know 12 months now so uh, between all that yesterday today I was just I'm not I wasn't feeling life I was just kind of wanting to lay around today uh, so Debbie said her tear out started today hey Pam how are you babe uh, Victoria says got my pipes fixed but we'll have to sheetrock and do the repairs later yeah, I've also heard that if you are somebody that has the, you know, pipes busted, you need to let it be exposed for a little bit until um, everything can get dried out properly. So, I don't know. I, 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 I've never had to deal with that before. Um, obviously, I feel very fortunate for that, but I don't have the experience of dealing with that or the knowledge behind, you know, what to do. So... Uh, yeah, my mom said last week nearly did her in. Man, y'all, I think it was, yes, last week was hard on everybody down here. Um, and it was just really exhausting, very mentally exhausting too. And it's just, I don't know, I just kind of, today was the first day I felt like I could catch up and just be a little lazy. Like, you know, my husband went back to work and Carly went to school. And so, um, I didn't have everybody meeting me, you know. So, uh, Debbie says, yes, moisture meter has to be at five. Some of mine are at 95. Wow. That's crazy, man. Well, I hope that gets worked out for y'all soon, man. I've been, woo, I've been thinking about y'all. I know that so many people are dealing with the same thing, unfortunately. I've been seeing stores too, that'll post that they have plumbing supplies. And then like 30 minutes later, they'll post that they're out. It's just craziness. Craziness, craziness. Hey, Kimberly, how are you, babe? Let's see. Uh, I gotta read that one down here. My mom says, uh, I was excited to see uh, three electric bills come in today so I could double check that I am on a fix and not 
a variable rate. Yay! <laughs> right? Y'all, so much craziness, man. So much craziness. And you know, we all thought, okay, 2020 was just crazy. 2021's got to be better. And then so far, at least down here, it's like, uh, okay, well, not so much, you know. Y'all, all I did was a little bit of um, a shading brown dry brush and then a little bit of camel. Um, I just kind of, I started with that reindeer brown as the base and just did a little bit of shading brown, a little bit of camel to kind of give it, you know, that two-tone look. We're still going to do all of our shading on here. I just wanted to kind of see what that would look like with the dry brush in the background. And just like the wooden cart we did last week, I know I had mentioned if anybody wanted to do a grayscale, that would also look really, really good. Uh, Mary says, uh, that's the only time I have been excited to get a pill. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. We, um, we only have two electric bills over here and we are trying to think what I'm trying to get. I need this brush. Uh, we are, unfortunately we're in an area that there is no other electric, electric provider. You only have one option. And so we're kind of like at the mercy of whatever they want to charge, you know, and we have two services with them. So it's not cheap. There's some months our bills are, you know, a thousand dollars for our house and our shop uh, for electricity. You know, it's kind of crazy, kind of crazy. All right, y'all, I'm going to get a little bit of shading brown. We're going to do a little shading on the base down here, and then we're going to flip it around and work on the eggs for a little bit. Oh, so I see paint parties. I'm missing some comments. Oh, hey, Academy members, the remodel on the house is almost done. Yay! Uh, in case if y'all have not caught it before, my mom and I have spoken about this several times, and we spoke again today, and Academy members will have a paint class with us in person uh, for free. I know we'll at least do it annually, if not, you know, a couple of times a year. We haven't ironed out all of those details. But just know you guys are gonna get one for free. Y'all come join us, bring projects you're working on, and um, get some hands-on help with us. So we're excited for that. Uh, Connie says, yay for paint parties, yay, yay, yay. Pam, yay for paint parties, y'all, it's gonna be so fun. All right, y'all, I'm getting a little bit more of that shading brown. This is a number 16 uh, shader. I'm, this is probably gonna be the biggest shader I'm gonna use on this piece. All the other parts of this, meaning the eggs, this number 16 is a little too wide. But on this base down here, I find it works really well. I didn't put my dogs up and now I'm sitting here going, why didn't you put your dogs up? I can hear them out there acting a fool. And I don't know why, but my dogs are just barkers. One starts barking and then they all start going crazy. Now on these spokes in here, inside of the wheel, I went ahead and painted it black in the background so it'll kind of fade out to the back. And then I brought a little bit of reindeer brown in here. I think I just used like a round tip brush. Uh, and really these spokes are the wider lines. I made them wider with a paintbrush. Um, I think uh, this brush might be a little too wide. I was gonna say, almost wanna do just a real, real thin uh, shading stroke on there. Uh, obviously you've got a really thin line, so you're not gonna wanna do anything too dark. Just kind of get it just a little bit. Yeah, ain't perfect, but we'll work with it. So let's see. Y'all. Uh -huh. Kimberly says, hey, but I, uh, I need an overnight paint party because I'm not driving home. <laughs> I get it, honey. I'm in Conroe, so I, I'm an hour away. Uh, Debbie says, how big is that piece? Uh, looks humongous. This one, it's the same sample size. Uh, I don't have it on here. Debbie, I want to say it's going to be around 23 tall. And around 30, 32 wide is my guess. Um, I don't have the dimensions written on the back of this one, so I can't be uh, for certain. But I know I get, I think I, uh, I think I get six of them on a sheet, and then so I know that they're going to be 23 tall. It's the width. I'm not 100% sure. Let's see. All right, y'all, I'm just coming in here. Almost. Y'all, as, as well as, hey, while 
while we're sitting here kind of talking about paint parties, if you guys have any uh, pattern ideas, some things that you'd be interested in uh, doing with us, let us know. As y'all know, the sky is really going to be the limit once we get everything up and running. It's going to be so fun. I just cannot wait. Connie, LOL. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm almost done with this shading brown. I think I'm going to have to get a uh, thinner brush on the kind of wood grain look inside of here. Because this brush is a little, a little on the thick side. So I'm going to switch and let me get one. Let's see. This is uh, a number 12. I don't know if I like this one. This one has a lot of bristles kind of fanning out on the sides. I'll try to use it, but I, I th almost think I need to take a pair of scissors to it and cut off just a few little hairs because they are, they've been driving me nuts. Do y'all ever get your brushes like that? You just got a couple hairs that are kind of straggly and hanging out. I like the width of this brush a lot better. And I even have my brush turned sideways. Um, I'm not even using the width of it. I'm kind of using the lengthwise. I think I'm liking the dry brush in the background a lot better than just having it plain. I really am liking that. I think it's cute. Uh, geez, this is relaxing. <laughs> Y'all, the paint, I just, honestly, I'm somebody too who I'll watch people on live when they paint and I just sit there just so mesmerized. I just enjoy it. That or, do y'all ever watch people that'll make like candles or glass blowing or anything like that? I just find everything like that to just be so peaceful to watch. Okay. So there is the base that I have so far. We're gonna let that dry a little bit. We only need to really outline it. Uh, but I got reindeer brown base, a little shading brown, and a little bit of camel dry brush, and then a shading brown shading. And that's what we got so far on the base. I'm gonna wash out this brush and we'll start working here on the top. Kimberly says, I'd need to book a room at uh, Mary's Inn or Connie's Motel or even Paula's Bed and Breakfast. Well, we could even have um, daytime paint parties. I, don't, I think that honestly, it's gonna be one of those things that um, we'll end up probably having to do both. But for the sake of painting, it's always better obviously to be there during the day when the sun's out. And you can get stuff to dry because nobody wants to leave, you know, their wet piece behind or have to load it in their car really wet and not have an opportunity to kind of let it dry some, you know. All right, y'all. I'm going to keep using this same number 12. Uh, this is just a royal gold soft grip. I think these are ones we did have in store. I'm not sure if we have any. I probably need to actually order some paint brushes. Um, but yeah, let's just get started. We're going to start with our shading yellow. This does have a little water added to it. I can tell it's a little, little bit separated. Let me scoot this over to see if that's a little better. Again, I'm really only loading the, the side, the, the kind of the corner, right? And I'm just very gently kind of pulling that along. I'm trying to keep it in that one stroke. I know I've talked to you guys about the one stroke. That's why I add a little bit of uh, water to my paint because if I can keep that brush down and flat that whole time and not pick it up, it's going to keep my lines from looking really choppy. That's just me personally. That's just how I like to do it. Uh, but if you're somebody who maybe finds the chop, you know, that you have some really choppy lines, try to extend that brush all the way across when possible. When you have really long lines, it's not that easy. And there goes that spare bristle, putting a bunch of yellow over there. I might even make that a little bit wider. Just a little bit. Okay. 
Now the yellow and the polka dots, they're really just too small. Um, I might bring in like a little dab of yellow on um, a script liner, but as far as trying to get in there with my shader, it's just too small of an area. Let's see, Mary says, yeah, it'll probably be on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, I even think like uh, 10, 12 o'clock uh, would be really ideal uh, just for temperature wise. But you know, it'll be something we play around with and we're gonna have to put feelers out there uh, for and you know, I, I don't think it'll always be at the same exact time, you know. We'll probably have different variations of schedules. We will be crossing that bridge here soon, y'all. Looking forward to it, super excited about it. Okay, do, 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 do. let's see, what do I find next? I got uh, shading pink right here. Y'all, I might even, I don't mean, I think I'm gonna use a little mixture. This is a mixture of shading pink, or excuse me, yeah, shading pink and regular pink. It's almost like a, uh, not quite Pepto, a little bit lighter than Pepto. Um, I know Mary and Victoria have used a similar color before. I might just kind of get a little bit here in my lid. I, I need to refill this container. I just wanted to do it, uh, do a little bit of shading with this and just see what we think of it. Um, obviously, you could always just use the shading pink. But this is just kind of a little bit of a lighter tone to it. Little bit of shading pink with a little bit of light pink. And ta-da! I really love that color. I just think it's really pretty. Really, really pretty. Okay, I'm trying to think, no, I think I'll leave it. I might just come in here and kind of give it a little swish with just kind of what was left in my brush. I love that pink, it's so pretty. I am, y'all got some emojis going on over here. Let's see, uh, let's see, oh, Acey boy. Yes, Ace is. Is he behind me? No, he's running around. Oh, he's, he's underneath me. My little baby, he's, uh, he's always following us around. Oh, well, hello. Let's see, <laughs> Mary Blackman. Cool, but we can still drag it out and have fun that evening. <laughs> Y'all are talking about having some drinks, yes. Debbie. <laughs> Y'all are so funny. Hey, it's you can always bring your own well, I don't know. We haven't necessarily talked about that, but for me, if you ask me, I say bring your own wine or whatever, you know, keep it in the limits, but why not? Hey, Debbie, how are you doing, babe? I'm so glad you're able to come hang out. Okay, y'all, we got our yellow shaded and we got our pink shaded. Again, that's just a little bit of a mixture between light pink and shading pink. You could even do that same thing with like your shading purple if you felt like that was a little bit too dark. You could always mix the two, uh, your light and your dark together to create a tone that's kind of in the middle. Now, I got a little bit of coral on here and I like to do shading orange with coral. I love the contrast you get from it. And I know, I think Victoria talked about it in her live, I think yesterday. You don't get the, op the opportunity to use coral very often. Same thing with um, mint green. We really only use mint green uh, around Easter time, maybe on some spring items, but that's about it. And so coral's the same thing. We really only get to use it for a little bit out of the year. So I really do like to try to use it as often as possible when it comes to Easter, just because I think it's a beautiful color. Y'all, I think I need to get some scissors to this paintbrush right here. It's got a little tail. It's kind of making it, um, uh, a little more sloppy than I want it to be. There we go. Now on these polka dots, I really don't feel like they're wide enough, but let me just, I think I'm just gonna kinda come in here and do a little, whoop. That one, it's a little, there we go. Just kinda add a few little swish marks to them. Um, if you have a really, really small shader, you know, you could always shade that. Uh, it's just a little too small for me. 
after the year 2020, any kind of party is good. <laughs> Hold AC boy up to the camera so we can see him. Oh, okay. AC, you want to say hello? Come here. Come say hi to the girls. Can you say hello? This is AC. He's part Dachshund and a uh, part retriever. He's a 30 pound wiener dog, y'all. He's my baby. And then I got my, my corgi here. Hi, okay, mommy's gonna finish working. Now they're all worked up, they're all excited. Uh, so 2021 ain't much better. Yeah, yeah, tell me about it, y'all. So glad you made it, W. Okay, y'all, okay, AC, go back to your spot. Let's just scoot over a little bit. There you go, okay. <laughs> He's so needy. Okay, let me, I'm gonna actually let that brush stay out because it's, it's kind of getting fanned out on me, but not in a way that I can just need to trim off a couple bristles. Okay, let's see. Max color. I'm going to do a little Christmas green on my green, on my mint green. A little bit of Christmas green shading. Same thing over here. I love this pattern because you can really get so many colors into it. And I just love the ability to have every color I could possibly use on um, a piece. And yes, it makes it take a little bit longer, but something like, you know, an Easter basket, I, I, it's enjoyable to me to be able to look at that and see every single pastel color I could possibly have is on there. I just like that. So I kind of tried to do the same thing as far as the color scheme on here. Now, uh, this blue is um, light blue, number one. You could also switch that out for sky blue, or maybe sky blue is number one. Light blue is number two. I can't remember. Uh, I used light, but you could use sky blue, and that'd be really pretty as well. Just mix this up a little bit. It's obviously separated. You know, I did switch shaders, but this is still the exact same, and it's a number 12 uh, royal gold. Trying to keep my lines kind of on the skinnier side. You know, I've got, these eggs are not that big. So I don't want to get kind of too much with it, you know. Okay, a little bit over here. I'll leave that. I'll leave that. Okay, uh, do, do. just thinking y'all, I keep having like brain farts today. I really just need to go to bed. I don't know, also, um, if y'all ever go through like periods where you aren't sleeping very good, and that's been us for like, I don't know, a couple of months now, waking up almost every night for 30 minutes, an hour, two, three hours sometimes. <coughs> it's just cold. Yeah, Mary said, I really like the color of the eggs. Thank you. Uh, but you don't have light orange. Kimberly, I don't do light orange and coral together because I feel like they're just really, really close. And then it almost, to me, for my eye, it almost just becomes too much of an orange tone. And so I usually do either or. And it's kind of the same thing with my blues. I usually stick to one blue, um, whether that's all sky blue or all light blue or all medium blue. You know, that's just kind of how I roll. I don't know why. Just me. Okay. Got a little shading purple. And then I think we're going to be ready to start outlining. All right. Let me get this one mixed because it is separated. Okay. I'm going to kind of do the same thing on these purple uh, polka dots over here. Just kind of add that little C. And you're just doing it with what's left in your brush. You're really not bringing in a whole lot of color into that. 
I'm looking at it, I'm trying to make sure it's all shaded, y'all, because do you know how many times I look at something, I'm like, okay, I'm all done, and then I start outlining, and I start to realize that there's a few spots I missed. So I'm just trying to double check. Uh, Connie says, AC is being so good. I don't know why this is cracking me up. Y'all, he's a good boy. He just wants to be with his mother 24-7, or his father. Uh, but his dad went outside, and it's cold, and... I get, he doesn't like the cold and he refuses to lay on the concrete floor so he sits in the chairs all day long because he is just I don't know y'all he is just over the top he's like having like a teenage girl we get this dry a little bit so we can start um, getting some outlining on here and I'm not pulling up wet paint Luckily, I didn't use a whole lot of paint on here, so it shouldn't take too long. It dried up just a little bit. Enough to where we can keep on moving. Uh, I'm going to buy him a doggy pet. Don't, because they eat them. They chew them up. Or Winnie does. My corgi just eats everything. We've bought so many doggy beds, and she either chews them up or they pee and poop all over them. And then, you know, I'm just like, really? And then I can't wash them because half the time they have a big hole inside of it, and it's just, it ends up going in the trash. Destructive little puppers, you know. They don't do that to my furniture. Like, they don't chew up my furniture, but they chew up their own dog beds. I don't understand it. Uh, Mary gave me one of her dog beds when Biscuit comes to visit me, and he has his own bed, and Buddy loves it. Yes, I've seen her, uh, I, I don't know, I think I went over there a couple of weeks ago, and um, I dropped Carly off at my parents' house when I went to the store to um, go drop off some stuff, because she usually wants to just go to my parents. They live half a mile from the store. So a lot of times I drop her off and then, you know, go take care of stuff at the store, do whatever I got to do, and then come back and pick her up. So I told Carly, I said, we're going to make it a quick trip. You know, we got to get back home. And um, so I'll be at the store for like 30 minutes and I'll come back and pick you up. So I get there to go pick her up and I was like, hey, dad, where's, where's Carly and, my, and mom? And then he's like, oh, they went to go uh, to Petco. I was like, what? I told Carly not to go nowhere. And then my mom comes home with these huge, luxurious dog beds, y'all. Like, you know, it's like getting your dog a purple mattress is what it almost looked like. Very, very nice. Yo, I'm using a little bit of that shading red, and Debbie and Mary will be very proud to know that this is not my old busted shader. This is a new one. I've been breaking it in. So because it's a little bit of a newer one, for me, I do have to kind of go back over and do a few swipes just to kind of almost get the thickness of my line to be the same. Because I do find whenever I'm having a newer brush, it's not quite fanned out the way that I like it. And so I don't always have the consistency of the thickness on each of my lines. So I kind of almost have to go back over and over just to try to get it to be as thick as it was at the starting point of my, what, you know, where I started my line and then the ending point. I'm also noticing, I know I've said this to some of you guys before, whenever I'm doing the script liner, and I first load my brush, I kind of get a lot of paint in there and then I almost offload just a little bit to where it's not gonna drip right off. And then I come in here and I come onto my lines and I'm really barely pressing down. I'm almost just kind of gliding along with that CNC line and then the further I'm going down that line, I'm kind of putting a little bit more pressure and a little bit more pressure and a little bit more pressure when I'm seeing that my paintbrush is running out of paint. So when I first go down, very, very light pressure. I'm seeing I also forgot shading right here. I'll have to come in and put some shading right there. Very light pressure. I'm not pushing down at all. As I'm going further, I'm pushing down a little more and then a little more. And that's to keep the paint flowing and keep my line a nice, smooth line. So if you're somebody who struggles with um, outlining and using that script liner when you first place it down start with a real light stroke and then you get your hand heavier as you're going along i find that helpful for me maybe some of you guys will find that helpful too 
sometimes because, um, you know, we, I paint for a living. It's hard to remember giving you guys, you know, good advice and good tips on things because it's something I just naturally do with my hand, but I don't always recall to really explain that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yes, Debbie, let's see what she has to say about throwing the old one away. I did not throw it away. Um, for all those inquiring minds out there, um, I'm not that ready, you know, to depart with it. It's like a breakup. It's, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to swallow sometimes. So I'm not ready to let her go. Uh, but maybe one day I will. <laughs> Uh, buddy and his big butt was way too big for his old bed. Yes, poor buddy. Oh, buddy boy, y'all. Buddy, it, he was my dog. Um, I had I got him. What Carly's gonna be twelve, so he's thirteen years old. And um, whenever I moved away from my parents' house, I went to take Buddy with me, and him and Bear, uh, which is his companion, they were like uh, almost depressed at my new house. They didn't like it because they went from my parents' property that had, um, what do they got, like two acres over there to having a little tiny house and a little tiny backyard. And they weren't eating and they weren't coming out from underneath the bed and all that. So I loaded them back in the car and took them back over to my parents. And they were just as happy as they could be. So it's kind of, my parents inherited my dogs, but my dogs really chose them. So... Uh, whenever I go over there and I bring Carly over there, uh, Buddy, the dog that we're talking about, he yelps and whines and gets so excited. He gets so vocal when he sees us. It's seriously the cutest thing. He's just a sweet boy. And if y'all couldn't tell, we are obviously major dog lovers in our family. All right, y'all, that's just a little bit of that shading red. I'm gonna come in and just fill this in just a little bit. Okay. And now I'm gonna turn it. And just show y'all up close. I think that wood grain in the background looks really, really good um, with that shading and that outlining on top. I just love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. You're raising your grand dogs, yes. Well, hey, at least you're not raising your granddaughter. Uh, at least it's just dogs. Loving, loving, loving this, y'all. I think it's coming along. It's getting really cute. I definitely like this better with the black in the background of the wheel and the sample I did. I did not do that. And as soon as I pretty much posted it, I was looking at it and I was like, I don't like that. And so I ended up coming back in and painting that back out, painting the back of the wheel black. And I just think it looks a lot better. Now, I can't decide over here if I want to, no, I think I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. I was thinking about doing a little outlining on there, but I think I'm going to leave it. Sometimes it's hard to decide what you want to do. Thank you, Joyce. How are you, babe? I didn't even uh, know you were hanging out with us. Um, I, Mary, true that. Although Carly is a great kid. Yes, she is. But kids are supposed to be with their mothers and fathers. So, obviously. I hope that that is never the case. Because if that's the case that she's ever living with my parents, it means that I'm no longer living. And I just could not ever imagine that. Could not imagine. Okay, y'all. The bottom of our wheelbarrow is finished. All right. We are going to just work on the top. Do a little bit of outlining. 
Um, I know my mom and uh, I, I as well is not the biggest fan about using black with Easter eggs. But for me personally, I find when I have a bunch of them together, I like to use the black. Um, you don't have to. You could always use, you know, shading colors that are in here. Uh, it's really a personal preference kind of thing. But I like it with the black. Hey, Carolyn, how are you doing, hon? Hope you're doing well. Hope you fared well with the weather um, last week. I know we've kind of had a few check-in posts. I can't recall if, um, if uh, you were having any issues, but I sure hope you weren't. Tomorrow I am going to be live and we are going to be doing our hop letters. So tomorrow we're going to do them in the grayscale because that is, um, I already have a uh, base coated sample in the grayscale for you guys, but I, I might go live again in like March at some point and just do that same pattern, but with a different color scheme on it. We'll have to see. Uh, but if y'all can join me at 2 o'clock tomorrow and come hang out and let me know if y'all are wanting to see other color schemes, that would be great. And Carolyn says, love the wood texture look. Thank you, Carolyn. I love it, too. I think it's coming really cute. Uh, Mary says, Miss Victoria, got to get you to draw the wheelbarrow with some hay and pumpkins for the fall. <gasps> yes. That would be adorable. That would be really cute, I think. People would love that. And I don't know if you guys caught Victoria's uh, tutorial over the egg cart or the, no, the chicken, the chicken pull on the egg cart thing. I don't, I don't know what it's called, uh, but the grass that she did was just, wow, absolutely magnificent. So, so cool. I would love a hay tutorial from her. Y'all, this is that Royal Gold number four script liner. The same one that we have in store. That line got a little bit wide on me. So kind of just clean it up with my finger and keep on moving. Uh, yes, Debbie says that grass was amazing. Seriously, so cool to watch. So, so cool. I really need to take the time and try to do it myself. I, uh, I've been doing a lot of watching, um, other people paint on videos, uh, the last, I don't know, maybe month or so. And I've been venturing out and trying to use, um, other paint brushes for some of these other projects I've been working on. So I think I was telling you guys last time I was on a live, um, the Peace Gnome, I have, I don't know, I probably use 10 different brushes on that thing, um, uh, used to rounded tip brushes and all sorts of different stuff and so i'm kind of going to be excited to teach that one because i just i feel like it's a lot it's a little bit different than things that i've normally done and i think that's fun so like watching victoria and doing the grass and stuff i thought that was just amazing and um, i'm hoping to show you guys some fun stuff when we do our peace gnome i think it's next thursday uh march 4th i think it's thursday so we're gonna do that then Yes, a hay tutorial would be great. I think, y'all, Victoria would knock that out of the park. She is just um, super, super talented um, at really giving your her pieces so much detail. Um, it just looks so pretty. I definitely enjoy getting to learn from her. Uh, just checking in, making sure y'all, I, I start to, um, 
I start to get to painting and then I, I realize halfway through, I'm like, I haven't even been really paying attention to the camera angles. I hope you guys can see okay. I don't know if anybody uh, got the chance to go outside today, at least those of you that are local to us, but how crazy is it that it was like, sh it could have been shorts and flip-flop weather this, this afternoon when a week ago, you know, we're all freezing and doing crazy stuff like having to sleep in our cars because, you know, we couldn't get warm. Just Texas weather, y'all. It's crazy. It's just crazy. I love this state, but she's got some crazy weather. Uh, definitely, uh, let's see, Debbie says, the black definitely uh, defines the eggs. Looking good. Thank you. I like black when it's a gang of eggs together. That's just me personally. I like it. You could really sit here and use your script liner and, tr and trade back and forth with different shading colors. You don't want all of these eggs. But to me, in that kind of situation, this is just my brain. I start to then ask myself, well, which color do I choose? You know, because that maybe that egg has a lot of different colors or I don't necessarily want things to kind of start clashing. I don't know, it almost just becomes where my brain starts overthinking and then I just go, just do black. You know, it's fine, just do black. <laughs> but there you go. We just need to add some white highlights and then we will be good. Uh, Joy says, I love the peace gnome. Yes, y'all, I cannot wait for that tutorial. Seriously, I'm so excited. It's probably going to be like over an hour long because there's a lot of uh, details I put into that piece. You have blue jean pants with a blue jean look. Um, obviously, we had a plaid shirt and then you have a tie-dye hat. So it's just a piece that will take a little bit more time. Uh, but for like those of you that are painting to keep it for yourself, you know, I think it's a piece you'll have a lot of fun with. I, I did not feel like it was hard but I try to put a lot of detail into the beard too. You know, it's just kind of, I don't know. I did that piece on a whole nother level almost with uh, just lots and lots of details, but I think it, it, it's what makes it look so good. Kimberly says, love this. Debbie, that looks good. Thank y'all. Okay, while I'm thinking about it, before I get too carried away over here, let me add a little bit more. Um, I missed this. Let me see if I didn't even get it. This piece right here, I got some outline on it, but I didn't get any shading under it, so it kind of looks silly just sitting there all willy-nilly. Add a little bit there, okay? And then I'm also noticing right here, I did not outline um, this little circle that I have. So let me fix that. Get a little bit more of that shading red down here. And now we can switch to white. Okay. Now, y'all, on my wheelbarrow, I, I'm not going to do white. I, actually, you know what? I'll do some just to show you. I don't typically do um, white highlights on a wood grain because I feel like that camel is kind of, it, it has that lighter color, so it's got that highlighting effect. Um, but I'll throw a few on here just because I never have, and we can see what it looks like together. And maybe it'll be something I start doing in the future, or maybe I'll just continue doing it without. Who knows? But we'll see. Let's see. What do y'all think? You like the white highlights over top of a wood grain? Or do you think it's better without? I'm almost just kind of bringing that brush and just trailing along the outside of some of these lines very, very lightly. I don't have very much paint inside of my brush. Sorry, y'all, this thing is long. It is hard to kind of keep it in, 
keep it in frame over here. There is wood grain with shading, outline, and highlights on top. Kind of look at that. Yeah, I, Pam says, I think it takes it away, uh, takes away from the dry brush. That's what I've always felt, Pam. Uh, Debbie says, looks good. Or the, the, that was from that. The, my dog is so cute. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. On the wheel, yes, but the plane on the rest. Yep, Kimberly, see, I'm with you on that. Debbie says, I like it with the white. Mary, he's so cute. Ashley, hold him up for the camera. <laughs> At the end of the video, I definitely will. Uh, Joyce, I like it both ways. Debbie, adds movement. And see y'all, that's exactly why, you know, I said, let's just do it. It's not something I, I normally do. And as you can see, some of you guys liked it and some of you guys didn't. And that's, that's the beautiful thing about this is that we can all really just do these things in our own way with our own twist, with what feels good and looks good to our eyes. You know, that's the fun part about it. I don't always feel the need to, you know, do what everybody else necessarily would do. I just kind of like to do what I like to do, you know. Just going to now take that brush really lightly across here. Kind of load it, offload some, and just keep it as light as possible. And then I really just keep bringing this brush through until I almost run out of paint. And have no choice but to come and get a little bit more. Hey, hey. Talk to them. It's okay. Just talk to them so they'll stop barking. My daughter just walked in and the dogs are barking at her like they don't know who she is. Crazies. Hi, baby. Um, I have to drop off Jocelyn's because uh, Rain is at a basketball Okay, after I get done working, then I can. Okay. Okay. Love you. Love you. Almost there, y'all. Kind of, kind of just... Boop. Do a few little C's on there. Same thing on here. And I think I'm going to call it done. I like the way it looks. I feel like it looks finished to me. Let me scoot back a little bit because this thing is very wide. There is your finished look. Okay. Let me bring it up a little closer. You could see that wheelbarrow you know, with those white uh, highlights. Obviously, you don't like the white highlights, just leave them off. Uh, and then there is your top. Super cute, I think it's cute. Um, you can honestly change this up in so many different ways. Uh, I don't know if Victoria is watching anymore, but I, I wanna say, maybe Mary help me out with this. Is Victoria going to be doing another variation of this pattern next month? I thought she was but I don't feel 100% confident in saying that and knowing that I'm right. <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure, but maybe uh, somebody will give us an answer here in a minute. Uh, but I, I wanna say she's gonna do her own version of this, which if she is, that's great. I can't wait to see it. Uh, Carla says, oh, yes, white, likes the white. Uh, Mary likes the white. Kimberly, putting white on the eggs makes them pop. That's why uh, the wood grain needs to stay plain with no white. I get it. I've always felt that way. And if y'all look at any of my painted stuff, I don't have white highlights on my, um, on my wood grain. I just don't do it. So, okay, Mary says, not sure yet. All right, I might have been speaking too soon or who knows, I might just be speaking out of my butt because I can't even remember what's going on. That's a possibility. Uh, I'm, I'm just scatterbrained all the time. All right, y'all, there is that look. Let me do a final uh, recap with colors. I did start with um, one coat of white as a base. The reason I always put white, especially underneath pastel colors, is because your pastels are not gonna show up near as well. They're not gonna have as much body and warmth to that color if it doesn't have a base underneath it. So white underneath. And then my base of my wheelbarrow is um, reindeer brown. I did a little bit of dry brushing with shading brown and camel, and then I shaded with shading brown and outlined with shading red down here. At the top, my colors are mint green, uh, pink, light pink, excuse me, uh, yellow, coral, light purple, uh, and light blue. And then I obviously shaded with all of those light colors now with my blue, I shaded with medium blue. If uh, you wanted to use sky blue, that's a really great alternative in here. You could always do sky blue. And I like to shade sky blue with teal. You could also throw in some seafoam green. I love that color too. That's also really good uh, with the sh teal shading as well. 
So, and then on the coral, I did use shading orange, but obviously yellow, I used shading yellow. Pink, I actually did a mixture of light pink and shading pink together. And that's how I got that kind of middle tone of our pink family. And then outlined in a little bit of black. So hopefully that answers everybody's questions. Mary, love it, thank you. Uh, all right, y'all, I am live tomorrow, I believe two o'clock, and we are doing our hop letters with the gray scale. Uh, I hope you guys can join me then. Uh, and then I believe, I don't know, we've got, I know the next month is starting. We've got a lot of tutorials coming out next month. I do know the Peace Gnomes uh, is March 4th. So I uh, will be doing those then. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me tonight. Y'all enjoy the rest of your night. I will see y'all tomorrow. And thank y'all for being here. Bye, everybody. See you later.